<clears throat> okay. Hi folks, do you know, something I've learned recently is that it's very, very useful to know one of these shadowy supercoder types who keep Elizabeth Warren awake at night. You know, well, not literally. Well, I suppose you never know. Uh, anyway, I have a friend called Colin and he is a whiz with computers and he has very kindly put together this little beauty for me. Now, it doesn't look like much, does it? Well, this is actually my very first crypto mining rig. Now wait, I know what some of you may be thinking. Guy, come off it. Crypto mining is big business. You'd need a room filled with thousands of those if you wanted to become a crypto miner. Well, you're half right. But before I talk about this chap here, I want to talk briefly about the mining process because it's one of the most technical and tricky aspects of crypto to try and wrap your brain around. So here goes. Um, so let's start with Bitcoin. Now here is a very, very simplified explanation of how Bitcoin is mined. So groups of transactions are batched together into blocks which form the Bitcoin blockchain. Now these blocks are encoded using a hash function and this assigns each block a very, very long unique number. And so this work is carried out by the miners on the Bitcoin network, and it's also their job to process the blocks and add them to the chain. Now, in order to link two blocks together, the newest block on the chain must contain its own unique hash number and the hash number of the preceding block. This, is, uh, this matching allows them to link together. So only by knowing this previous number can a miner add their new block to the chain. So how do the miners know this previous hash number? Well, the simple answer is, and the very simple answer is, that they have to guess it. Now, because this number is so damn long, you can imagine that guessing it is not easy. In fact, the odds of doing so are trillions to one. So, therefore, in order to guess this number, the miner's computer must submit a lot of guesses. And doing that means expending a lot of computing power. Now, all the miners on the network submit these guesses until one of them gets it right. And when they do, they are allowed to add their block to the chain and in return for their efforts, sorry, in return for their efforts, they receive the block reward, which is, of course, fresh and tasty bitcoins. So the uh, block reward is uh, 6.25 bitcoins to be precise at this point in time or around $365,000 at today's prices. And this system is called proof of work and the work of course being done is that done by the miners computers which then translates itself into very large electricity bills. So when Bitcoin first appeared, it was actually possible to mine Bitcoins using a home computer and its central processing unit or CPU. But Satoshi coded Bitcoin so that as the network grew and more miners joined it, the difficulty level of the mining would increase. And the reasoning behind this was to ensure that new blocks and new coins were produced roughly every 10 minutes, no matter how much computing power was being thrown at the network. It sort of was, it was designed basically to kind of self-regulate in this way. So, at first, there weren't very many people using the Bitcoin network. It was really only a handful of enthusiasts who would kind of discovered it through uh, the cypherpunk mailing list and, and other uh, forums. Um, but one of these, and one of these guys was Satoshi. He was obviously mining it as well. But in 2010, there was a software engineer called Laszlo Hanyex, and he was trying to improve the network by finding its potential vulnerabilities so that they could be fixed. Basically, he was one of the good guys, in other words. So one such vulnerability that he considered would be what would happen if someone with a lot of computing power began mining bitcoins and therefore winning more. Now this was theoretically possible even with the inbuilt difficulty increases that Satoshi had written into Bitcoin's code. So 
Laszlo's idea was, instead of using his computer's CPU to do the hard work, he would instead use a part of his computer that was actually better suited to doing the kind of work involved in mining, his graphics processing unit, or GPU. The plot thickens. So, to cut a long story short, it worked. Laszlo's GPU-powered mining, it won him loads more Bitcoins than before, and it changed the nature of Bitcoin mining forever. And if you've heard Laszlo's name before, it sounds familiar, it, the, this is because he is the guy who then spent 10,000 BTC on pizzas because he had so many BTC lying around thanks to his high-tech mining, and he is Bitcoin pizza guy. Yeah, it all comes together. So, as you can imagine, this started off the arms race that has led us to the situation today where proof of, my, well, sorry, proof of work mining involves basically warehouses full of specially designed mining rigs running 24-7 to earn those block rewards while using more electricity than many countries. So, this has actually been good for Bitcoin and other proof of work cryptos like Ethereum for the time being because the more computing power on their networks, the more secure they become. But the downside is that it has sadly made mining these cryptos impossible for, well, ordinary folks like you and me, just with their regular old computers at home. Now nowadays, because proof of work mining is expensive, it consumes a lot of power and it requires a lot of specialized equipment, many cryptos are mined differently. Um, and this often requires putting up a lot of money in order to become a validator on a proof of stake network. I, you've probably heard that term before. I won't dig into it too much here. So the thing to remember is that even with proof of stake, the barriers to entry remain high, but in a different way. And crucially, mining becomes more centralized as a result. So in crypto, obviously, centralization goes down like wasps at a picnic. However, there are some exceptions to this state of affairs. And that brings me neatly on to this little baby. Now, one cryptocurrency that still uses proof of work mining is Monero, and that is the number one privacy focused coin out there. Now, I've done a couple of full length videos on Monero, which I urge you to watch, and they're over on our main channel if you want more info. It's a fascinating, fascinating project. So, all I'll say here is that the tech behind Monero is so freaking clever that even the US government haven't been able to bring it down, and they have been trying, I can tell you. Okay, so the Monero devs are basically determined to keep the Monero network as decentralized as possible. And so about a year ago, they implemented a new proof of work consensus called RandomX. And this is basically optimized for CPU mining. So what this means is that more people are able to mine Monero at home and so the network becomes more decentralized and not dominated by kind of large mining concerns with rooms full of specialized computers that you see with Bitcoin and for the time being Ethereum. It's basically power to the people. So I've been a big fan of Monero for a while and I've long been intrigued by the prospect of mining it myself. Thing is, I am not a tech whiz and I haven't had the time to try and figure out how it's done because, well, I've been making videos for you folks. But my pal Colin was able to help and so he has put this together for me. Now, as you can probably see, I've taken the side off so you can sort of see inside, which makes it look a lot more glamorous <laughs> than it actually is. But as you can see, it kind of looks like any old desktop computer. Um, there's a, CP a CPU in there, uh, some RAM, a few other bits and bobs. Um, and I, I should say that it also has a GPU, but that is mining some other cryptos too, uh, including the likes of Ravencoin, uh, Colin tells me, um, and they are then converted to Monero. Now, because we wanted to keep things relatively simple, we're not mining Monero blocks on our own because that would involve committing to some slightly better and slightly more expensive hardware. So what Colin has done has uh, been to join a mining pool where basically a network of rigs like this one pool their resources in return for smaller rewards. They basically get a cut of Monero block rewards. And so you can think of this as being uh, basically like a member of a, a lottery syndicate or something similar, basically where everyone pays uh, a small price um, for a higher chance of winning uh, a cut of 
the big prize. So, uh, some facts and figures. Basically, Colin tells me that he managed to put this slot together for around a thousand pounds, but that is using some bits and bobs that he had lying around because, well, because he is a shadowy supercoder and he has bits and bobs lying around. <laughs> it uses, I'm told, about 480 watts of power, which is kind of ballpark having a small fan heater running, and I hope it is going to help heat the office over the winter because it gets pretty cold in here overnight. Um, so what I'll do is I'm going to put the side back on in a sec and then I'm going to put it in its new home under the ping pong table in the office um, and well it remains to be seen how much we make from it and you know to be honest I'm really in it for the tech but I will keep you posted on our returns. So I hope that was interesting for you guys and uh, you know I hope the mining process is slightly clearer as a result of this video because Believe me, it gets way more complicated under the hood, and this was just sort of my attempt at basically a simplified explanation of what goes on. There's a lot more on our main YouTube channel and our website about mining and Monero and much else besides, so if you're curious, then do head over to both places if you want to know more. But la one last thing that I want to leave you with is what am I going to call this baby? So please leave suggestions in the comments and I will choose one in due course. I can't wait to hear what you folks come up with.